Hi everyone, welcome to the 12th lecture of Ansible series and in this lecture we will try to understand more towards dynamic inventory. Now we have played a lot with the term called inventory and inventory is basically where you keep all your IP addresses of managed node, Ansible managed node. Or you create a group, web server, database server, application server, place all the FQDN or the IP addresses in that particular inventory file, what we called as host within Ansible home directory. Now let's suppose if I have a dynamic environment. So in cloud, we see like most of the environment, we can make it dynamic and we can make it static as well. So let's say my instance is running on a dynamic IP address. So if I stop the server and start it again, my IP address will change. So this process will go on and on and we have to update our inventory file, right? Which is not a good practice, I would say. It's kind of a pain to update inventory file again and again when your IP address keeps changing. So in that case, dynamic inventory comes into picture because whatever we had played till date, entire Ansible series, we have played with the static inventory where we updated our inventory file and we, on top of that, we perform the operations with the help of adopt command, playbook or modules. Now, in case of dynamic inventory, why this is useful? Because it's a perfect job to reduce the human error as information gathered using script. So dynamic inventory is just like a script, a dynamic script, fetching out all the information of your environment and based on that, on top of that, perform the operations. So it's a minimal effort required to managing the inventories. As I said, managing an inventory, if you have a static inventory altogether, fine, go with that, no issues. But if there is some dynamic uh, environment is there, then obviously dynamic inventory, whenever you want to call, it's just a script that will fetch the data from your environment and do the job. That's what dynamic inventory is. So in this configuration, especially a cloud setup such as AWS, where inventory file keeps constantly changing as you add or decommission servers, keep the tab of the host defined in the inventory file becomes a real challenge. Again, I have thousand servers. Every six months, let's say I'm deprecating a server or every month I'm deprecating a server because there is no use of that server. So I have to remove that server from my inventory file. I have to update the server which I'm provisioning. So that makes more challenging job. And that's where dynamic inventory becomes more convenient for us to perform the operation with the help of Ansible. And this is where dynamic inventory comes to play. So what is dynamic inventory? It is a script written in Python, PHP, or any other programming languages. It comes in handy in all the cloud environments such as AWS where IP addresses change once the virtual server stopped and start again. The same scenario which I talked about. Ansible, one of the best part over here is you don't have to write a script because Ansible already has developed an inventory scripts for public cloud platforms such as GCP, Google Compute Engine, Amazon EC2 instances. We have OpenStack, then Rackspace, Cobbler among others and I guess uh, Azure also is there. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. You just have to use what Ansible is already giving to us. So that's what dynamic inventory is useful for us over here. Now, how can you make a use of dynamic inventory? So in Ansible, there are like two ways of uh, connecting the external dynamic inventory. One is via script, which is kind of an older way, I would say. and ensures the backward compatibility is there, but don't use it with the latest version. It will, there is some compatibility issue if you use it for the latest version. I'll show you one by one. And second is the plugin, which is obviously recommended over the scripts of the dynamic inventory as plugin are updated with the Ansible core code to take advantage of it. Now in this lecture, I will show you with the help of script. In my next lecture, I will show you with the help of plugin. So just try to get the concept of dynamic inventory. It is very simple. Whenever you want to call, whenever you want to update, just have the script already there, right? Use that script as per your cloud vendor, whether it is Azure, GCP, or uh, let's say AWS, use that script, which will fetch out the information of your servers and on top of that, perform the operations, right? 
Now, why scripts? Obviously, there are like a lot of modules over here. You can uh, create uh, or you can run a command or execute a command ansible doc hyphen t inventory. L. Then you will see like you have nmap, host list, edge cloud, open stack, vulture. Then we have uh, AWS EC2. They're like a lot. Kubernetes as well. Okay. So let's move ahead. This is the GitHub location that I found for the script. There is something called ec2.py. This has written uh, with Boto3 compatibility. So you can run with the help of uh, this script. But again, preferred one is plugin. I am just showing you the older way in this lecture, just to make sure we cover all the concept and you'll be able to answer everything in your interview questions as well. Again, dynamic inventory, I would say more of a production based scenarios in a real time project that uh, you will interact with. You will mostly working with the dynamic inventories only because this is much more uh, easy approach towards uh, creating or uh, performing an operation on top of your uh, inventory management. Now, there is another way, let's say if you want to have a host file already updated with it, if you, let's say if your host file is in a different location and you want to call it dynamically, then what you can do ansible all, or let's say the group, then hyphen I is basically for calling the dynamic inventory, call the location hyphen M ping or whatever the command you want to run, okay? Let me stop the presentation. I hope this clears a lot in terms of the concept part of dynamic inventory, why we use dynamic inventory and advantages over static inventory. So first, let me go to my terminal. This is my controller engine. I'm into my own directory. So if I do ls, as you can see, I have configuration file. I have two files, which is eni and ec2.py. Then we have obviously the host as well and test.txt. Now, first one, which is basically, let's say PWD, where I'm, I'm into home Ansible admin, my directory. Now, let's say I want to call Ansible. One way of calling uh, the dynamic inventory is this Ansible, Ansible all hyphen I, then call your dynamic inventory. I mean the host file, basically Ansible, then host hyphen M ping. So whatever we have, uh, the server present in this particular host file, we are getting a response for that. So that's one way of calling a dynamic inventory if you don't want to uh, call from uh, the directory which you are working with. Okay, again, Ansible hyphen hyphen version. As part of our last lecture, we have checked this. The configuration file, since I'm running from the local directory, I'm getting the nearest configuration file for the response. Perfect. So let's try something uh, with the help of this uh, EC2 PY. So first of all, let's try to run this EC2 dot PY. Okay. No module name Boto3. So for this, we have to install Boto3. Otherwise it will not work. Let's try to install Boto3 sudo pip2 install boto let's see installing this you are using pip version this however version this is available you should be there okay that's fine now if i run just ec2.py you should be able to see something okay boto exception no handler way to authenticate check your credentials perfect so what this error is all about because we are trying to interact with our EC2 instances within AWS, right? So in order to interact with EC2 instances within AWS, either you have to create a credential, which is uh, an IAM user, AWS configure and keep your uh, access key and secret key and region. That's one way of interacting with AWS instances. Other way of interacting AWS is IAM role, which is a preferred way. Instead of storing a credential, let's use IAM role. So for that, let me go to my AWS management console. And first of all, let's go to IAM. We'll create an IAM role over here with EC2 access. I already have a role, but I don't remember what the exact name is. So instead of, uh, thinking much more, I'll create a new one for you guys. So it's AWS service EC2 
click next ec2 let's search for ec2 i'll go with ec2 full access for now next and let's give this ansible role for ec2 perfect create a role come on yeah it's creating a role so it's ansible role force 2 oh sorry anyway we have the role so let me go to both the servers master and the con uh, and the manage node to change the security group to give the access not the security group sorry actions security modify im role and let's search for actually ansible where is that update i'll give the same to my controller as well ansible update so now our ec2 instance should should respond so let's try to run the script dot by enter we should be able to see some response now like collecting all the inventories and everything whatever we have in our AWS region. So everything is running from Virginia. I should be able to see all the running instances within the list. Perfect. As you can see, we are getting a response with the VPC ID. We have all the three public IPs. Then based upon the availability zone, then with the region as well, type of instance I'm running micro, then based on the node and everything, right? There is a section called EC2 where it's basically a group called EC2 within that I have three public IPs, which means three servers are running inside it. So one of them are actually two of them are the Ansible controller engine. One is running on RHEL 8 and another one, which is I'm on, which is CentOS 7. The third one is the managed node, which is running on CentOS. Okay. Now, if I try to find out, let's try to find out if these nodes are responding to ping or not. So for that, what I have to do, ansible, then hyphen i for the dynamic inventory, call the script, py, then call a group, which is ec2, we are getting response above, hyphen m, and then go for like uh, uptime, shell, hyphen a, I'm calling a module, where call, uptime, enter. Perfect, so, here we are not reachable because this is another uh, controller engine which is on RHEL 8. I haven't shared anything with this machine. As you can see 54, 162, 176, 235 giving an uptime over here. And the third one is the self machine. Obviously the verification has not been done for the self machine. So which means this particular dynamic inventory is getting called with the help of ec 2 dot py python script and there is it's a combination basically python script and the ini file i'll be sharing the link of the python script as well the github article that i have uh, seen from where i have copied the script because script is already there so there is no waste of uh, time to write a script write the logic again but yeah you can write in a different language if you are aware of and call it within your ansible controller engine so that's what the dynamic inventory is all about using the script version, which is kind of an older way. Now within this script might be few of the functionality not work because uh, if you run it with uh, 3.6 or 3.7 Python version, you might have to update the script like print function and rest of the few exceptional exceptions that uh, what we get with the Python uh, update from 2.7 to uh, 3.6 or 3.8, right? So it's always better to go with a plugin, which is always uh, up to date from the Ansible side. So in next lecture, I'm going to show you how you can run the dynamic inventory with the help of EC2 plugin. Place out a comment in comment section. If you're facing any issue, I'll be there to help you. See you in next lecture. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.